prosecutor, Garbez. Um, my name is Corey Teague. I'm a member of the uh, Patterson Board of Education, and I'm one of the activists um, in the city of Patterson that you know, speaks out about violence, not because of any political interest, but because I have two children of my own that have to walk these streets every day, that have to go to school here every day. And as a father, I want to protect my children. And I look at all of the children in Patterson as my children. So when I hear that a child is being, has been shot in the street or has been beat up, it makes me feel like that was one of my children. So the reason why I'm here tonight is to, I know that you want to hear some of what may be a concern to what may be the cause of the violence. Well, if there's a serious imbalance of wealth in this city. There's a serious imbalance of economic stability in this city. There are the haves and the have-nots the big eyes and the little U's. We have a small group of people who are controlling everything, and the masses are being left in the cold. You have folks that are, that are taking bribes, you have folks that are taking money, you have folks that are making deals in back rooms in the middle of the night, while innocent lives and innocent people have to succumb to the poverty and to the crime and to the things that are happening in the streets. When you back somebody up against the wall, and I'm not endorsing any, any type of criminal activity, and when you back somebody up against the wall and you don't provide them with any resources where they can take care of their family, and you put them in a position that they're not able to provide for themselves, you leave them with, no, with not too many more options than to try to get out there and find a way to make a living. So it, it, you know, it, it comes down to the fact that we need to be more sensible. Because what I see is a lot of folks, when they get in office, they lose sense of who they are as a human being. They begin to forget the, the, the needs of a human being. We all want to eat. We all need to have clothes on our back. We all need shoes on our feet. And we, and we can't continue to criminalize or, or put somebody down because they're not able to get a higher education that some other folks may, may have. You know, there are some folks who may not be able to do that right now, but does that mean that they don't need a job right now to pay the rent? The landlord and the mortgage company don't want to hear that you don't have a college education. They just want to know where their rent money is. So when your back is against the wall, and let's just say a young man, their mother, is about to lose their house, and he's trying to find a job and, and, and trying to get money to help her pay that mortgage. And when it comes to the point where that second notice shows up, and they say the sheriff's officers will be at your house tomorrow to put you guys out in the street, and they can't find a job, they're going to hit that block and do whatever they got to do to make that money so that the mortgage can be paid. A lot of these young men, because I'm out there talking to them all the time, there's a lot of young men out there who do not want to be out there. That's right. We always talk about the guys who want to be out there. There's a lot of them that don't want to be there. That's right. But they were pulled into that system because they had no other means of support. There was no other system available for them. They would go to social services and get no help. They would go to county offices and get no help. They would go to city offices and get no help. Meanwhile, you have people who are connected who have jobs that they don't even show up to and they collect a paycheck for it. How does that work? There's an imbalance here. So until you can remove the imbalance, you can forget about addressing the issue of violence. There's an imbalance. There needs to be equality. And the equality needs to go across the line. There should be opportunities made available to everyone who wants the opportunity. But when you turn people away because you say they don't have this document or this information or that information and you don't even give them the opportunity to try to make a better living for themselves, when their back is against the wall, they're going to find their own way to make a better living. That's, right. That's what they're going to do. You have to understand, it's called the survival of the fittest. That's what it's called. It's survival. So we cannot continue to criminalize people who are trying to survive because they're not being provided the resources to be able to survive. So I'm asking you, if there's a way that you can get a message down to the government, because I went down to Trenton and I took 900 signatures with me from Patterson residents that are tired of the violence. If there's a way that he can push a jobs initiative that will allow people who want jobs to be able to get them, and people who want employment, and people who want to go to school who can't afford to, if there's uh, uh, anything available, because I know there's got to be funds available for that, if they can bring that into Patterson, because believe me, if you provide these young people with a means to take care of themselves, they will get off those streets. I can promise you that. If you provide them with a means to make an honest living, they will get off those streets. But they're going to survive one way or another.
So it's, it's, it's kind of like this. Either way, they're going to survive. But the problem is, maybe you want them to survive that way so you can throw them in the prison system and make money off of them. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a business. But it's enough with making blood money off of the community. I think that the, that the prison system has made enough money off of our community. They made enough billions of dollars off the black community. I think they made enough money. It's time for them to reinvest that money back into the community. I went to a meeting, just one more second, I went to a meeting a couple nights ago with a liquor store owner, and they wanted the curfew to be removed from the liquor stores. And the liquor store owner said, because of the curfew, he's not allowed to make, he can't make enough money so that his child can continue to go to college. So he don't care about our children surviving as long as his child can survive off of the money that he gets from our community. And when I asked him if he could take some of his money and open up a program for our young people, he turned it away. So it's time for us to care about our own. So if you're here tonight, please look out for Patterson. We need help. Thank you.